Happy holidays and welcome to Financial Health and Wealth, where we educate you in various ways to improve your life financially and live long, healthy lives. Today, we're going to talk about five things that you can do with a bonus. And if you'd like to see more of this type of content, then like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know about future videos. Let's get started. What do you think most people are tempted to do if they get a bonus or a tax refund? What are you most tempted to do if you get a bonus or tax refund? Probably spend it. Why? It's easy to think of a hundred things you could use that extra cash for right now. Home repairs, upgrades, a night out on the town, that new handbag you've been coveting for months. Maybe your bonus is enough for you to consider trading in your car for a nicer one or getting that new addition to your house. Hold up. Don't spend it all just yet. There are some great ways you can put that windfall to work for you before it disappears during a spontaneous shopping spree. Number one, pay off those credit cards. This may not seem like quite as much fun as that Paris vacation you were daydreaming about, but paying down debt is like finding money every single month. Paying down debt is the fastest way to give yourself a monthly raise if you come into some unexpected cash. Take a look at your debt and see what your highest interest rates are. If you're leaning towards saving the bonus you've received, keep in mind that high borrow costs may rapidly erode any savings benefits, and it might even negate the benefits entirely if you're forced to dip into your savings in the future to pay off high interest. The higher the interest rate, the more important it is to pay off the debt earlier. Otherwise, you're simply throwing money at the creditor. Number two, save it. On the other hand, sometimes interest rates are low enough to warrant building up an emergency savings fund instead of paying down existing debt. An example is if you have a long-term fixed rate loan, such as a mortgage. The idea is that money borrowed from mer for emergencies rather than non-emergencies will be expensive because emergency borrowing may have no collateral and probably very high interest rates like payday loans, or even credit cards. So it might be better to divert your newfound funds into a savings account, even if you aren't reducing your interest burden, because alternatives during the emergency might mean paying 20% or higher, rather than 0% on your own money. Relatively large loans might have low interest rates, but the actual total interest amount that you pay over time might be quite a sum. In that case, it might be better to gradually divert some of your bonus money to an emergency account while simultaneously starting to pay down debt to reduce your interest. A good rule of thumb is that if the debt repayments compromise a big percentage of your income, pay down the debt, even if the interest rate is low. Experts recommend that you have enough savings to cover at least three to six months of expenses. This is the perfect opportunity to break away from the statistics and get prepared. Consider setting up a designated checking account that allows easy access to your savings. Number three, put it in a college fund. If you have kids, this is a great time to contribute to the college fund or start one if you haven't already. It's never too early to give your kids a head start. A really big need to consider while the kids are still young? Well, financing college tuition. College Board reported that an average in 2017 to 2018, tuition plus room and board for an American in-state four-year public college was $20,770. Whereas the same for the average private college costs $46,950. No one can guess what the cost might be in 5, 10, or 15 years. If you choose to help finance your child's tuition, make sure you're not doing it at the expense of saving for your own retirement. It can be a challenge to save for college education and for your own future, but with the solid financial strategy, the potential you create for both of those scenarios is worth all the sacrifice you might need to make right now. 4. Invest in yourself. This might be the perfect chance to finish off those last few credits for a degree or to earn that certificate you've been wanting but couldn't justify spending money to complete. If you choose carefully, the right degree of certification can open doors in your career, potentially enhancing your earning power and helping you break out of the holding pattern. You could also start a side gig with your bonus. What if you could get paid for doing something that you already enjoy doing? We're all good at something. Many people have turned their hobbies into side businesses in a way to earn extra money. For nearly everyone, there's a topic that they know well or a skill that they have that many other people don't have. That niche can spell opportunity and a chance to turn something you enjoy doing anyway into a moneymaker. Depending on the type of hobby you have to monetize, your startup expenses may be quite low. For writing, coding, or graphic design, you might only need a laptop or a tablet, something you may already have. Number five, take a vacation. Now you're ready to go bury your toes in the sand and enjoy some new experiences. Maybe it's a trip to Paris, or maybe it's someplace else you've always wanted to go. Maybe you and your family have always wanted to visit a theme park or vacation on a tropical island. 
While 2020 was filled with remote getaways and road trips and staycations, Americans are dreaming of island escapes and big city trips for next year, according to Expedia's 2021 Travel Trends Report. Most popular destinations people search for, more than two-thirds are islands or beach destinations, with Cancun and a grouping of Riviera Maya, Playa de Carmen, and Tulum coming in as a top two, according to the report. So if you're taking care of business responsibly and all the items above are checked off and you still have some cash left over, go ahead. Treat yourself. You deserve it. Bottom line is, receiving an unexpected windfall is fun. It's exciting. But here's where some caution is wise. Pause for a moment. If you had everything you needed on Friday and then got a raise on Monday, you'll still have everything you need, right? Nothing has changed but the calendar. If you hadn't gotten that bonus, would your life and your current financial strategy still be the same as it was last week? Consider putting most of that extra money away for later and using some of it for fun. If you do receive an unexpected windfall, it'll be worth it to just take the time, think about a strategy for how it can be best used to maximize long-term benefit for you and your family. And so, to summarize, we just went over five different things that you can do with an unexpected windfall, whether it be a bonus, tax return, or maybe even a check. So, that is, pay off credit cards. Save it. College fund. Invest in yourself. Vacation. Thanks for watching. And as always, hit the like and subscribe buttons to keep getting future content. And go ahead and tap that notification bell while you're at it. And for those of you who've already celebrated your holiday, might be currently celebrating your holiday, or maybe you're not yet celebrating your holiday, I wish you all the best and enjoy the rest of your day.